In this video, me and Oliver are going on a seal hunt. We are visiting Calavador, uh, that runs in Exanting, up in Hudiksvall, approximately three and a half hours drive by car in the north of Stockholm. Yeah, yeah, it's it's seal, um, five, five seals on that yeah. uh, small island. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, I think we do like this with, the, with you and uh, Tobias. Uh, you will go uh, on shore. Uh, we will first uh, try to turn as much around as possible because we don't want the seals uh, to see us when we go straight ahead. So we need to go around so we have the island between us and the seals. And then we, um, you and Tobias go uh, on shore and uh, I will just stay put in the boat uh, and when you have shoot it uh, I, I will come pick it up for you uh, and if you get another chance uh, you try to take two yep. yeah but first you need to see uh, so the first one is, is dead yep. yeah so that's the pattern. I vattnet. Där jag ser.
There was four or five seals on the rocks when Oliver shot the first one. The other ones went into the water. And what's happening now is that Oliver is trying to get a shot on another seal. But this is very hard. It's like a whack a mole. The seals are just uh, bobbing up their heads a few seconds and then going down directly again. This is a totally different thing that, than what we're used to hunting wild born deer at home. <laughs> Oliver didn't get any opportunity to shoot the second seal, so instead we guided uh, Kalle to the place where Oliver shot the first seal, and uh, so Kalle could recover that seal. Congratulations. Thank you. Really nice shot. Uh, I think there was one big and three small ones because when we first uh, went over there and saw them, I, I, only, I thought I only saw one. Yeah. But um, when I looked again, I saw something. I, I thought it was birds, but I saw then it was uh, seal. So yeah. probably it was one big and three small ones. Yeah. And you shot, shot one on the small. Uh, perfect uh, shoot pr placement, so yeah, yeah, really nice. Congratulations! Yeah. For this seal hunt, I have uh, chosen to use my uh, steel action caliber 308. I think it's a very good caliber for this, uh, it's accurate and uh, I have uh, the Hornady VMAX bullet, it's a soft bullet, it's perfect for this kind of shooting when you shoot for head headshots for the game. Uh, on top of my rifle I have my 3 Decon 4 to 4.5 to 30 times 56 it's a good rifle scope with high magnification and it has had parallax adjustment because it can vary quite a lot in the distances, so I can adjust and get focus on the target. Uh, I have my Stalon uh, silencer. Uh, I have it always. I think it gets better accuracy from the rifle and uh, with the less recoil and so on, you get better performance from your shooting. Uh, some interesting stuff here when it comes to this kind of hunt, what I noticed that you can vary your shooting rest a lot. Uh, since uh, that can be qu quite long distances and you can have a stand out on a, um, on a rock, you can lay down in some cases. Then a uh, small bipod like this from Spartan is perfect. Uh, I noticed that it's very important that they don't slip on the rocks. So on this you can take off uh, rubber uh, caps and you get this uh, very nice 
points that get a good grip on the rocks. I, I think this is very good. And many times the rocks are a little high, so you can have, stand up, take a rest on the rock, and this is very uh, good. But sometimes when you stalk over the rocks and there, you maybe need to sit down, this is a little too short. Uh, I also have brought my uh, trigger sticks. Uh, sometimes, like this night, we sat on a rock for three hours. Uh, then I get the perfect height from this while sitting down. Other equipment we use for this hunt. Uh, this hunt is much about spotting the animal, spotting the seal. And uh, I cannot emphasize enough the importance of having binoculars. Of course, when going on a guided hunt like this, uh, Kalle, uh, of course, have all this equipment and he helps you spot the seal, but I like to participate in the hunt and uh, also uh, look for the seals. So uh, a pair of good binoculars is uh, very nice to have. We also noticed that a uh, thermal camera can be very good because the seals, they are, of course, hotter than the environment around them and it's, you can very easily spot small dots uh, on the sea or on the cliffs and when you come closer you can uh, easily see them with the binoculars and so on. So we have actually used them both. Uh, when it's a little foggy and so on this won't work and yeah you can uh, change depending on the condition. The last equipment that uh, I think is good to bring on a hunt like this uh, is a radio because many times the boat let you off on a rock and uh, you stay there for a while and you can communicate with the boat and also if you shoot a seal the boat needs to go up very fast and try to grab the seal before it sinks uh, so good communication and it's not always you have a cell phone uh, connection and so on so uh, to bring a pair of uh, uh, com radios is good and of course, like with the binoculars and other stuff, when you go with Kalle, he have all this stuff. But maybe for those of you guys who see this and will go out and try yourself, uh, this is what kind of equipment we have used. We had some seal coming up very close to us. For all of it, it was fairly easy to maneuver the camera to get a good view of the seal. It was a much bigger challenge for me to move both my body and the rifle in the direction of the seal.
turn out good. I'm so cold and excited that, that I can't almost talk. It's very cold to lay in the, in the rock here. I'm super happy and it turned out good. I see the seal is floating over there. I don't think it was more than 20 meters. So now we're waiting for Kalle to come in with the boat so we can salvage the, the seal. And uh, I'm very excited to shot my first seal. It's a very unusual hunting situation for me. Uh, now we are in uh, 1st of October. We was uh, here at you in the, in uh, July, I think it was, yeah. and uh, the seal wasn't there. They was out in the sea hunting for herring, probably. Yeah. Oliver had opportunity to shoot one, but we went on for days, and but now we come back and I could shoot a seal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to thank you for a very exciting hunt. It's very special to go out on the sea with the rifle. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, indeed. It's a very special. Uh, kind of hunting and uh, really good uh, shoot placement just uh, underneath the skull uh, you uh, you save the skull from cracking so you can you can uh, save it and um, also save the skin and uh, it's a really nice skin it's a young seal it's a it's a, a offspring uh, one uh, one year old yeah. uh, Unfortunately, they're pretty small this time of year because of the industrial uh, fishing. Yeah. Uh, the, the food is uh, getting a shortage in uh, the Baltic Sea and um, here you have the results. Uh, very small seals. Uh, this one should probably weigh about twice as much as it do now. Yeah. So this is now approximately 25 kilos, so yeah, this should weigh around 50-60 kilos? yes, yeah. this time of year. Yeah. Uh, when it comes to the, the skin, if you w want to have a skin to do some uh, something with, uh, I've heard that the young seals have the nicer skin. Is it correct? Yeah. Uh, first of all, they're they're at least the least scarred. Uh, they don't have the battle scar as the as the old ones. Uh, also, you have much brighter uh, tone in the in the skin. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you uh, you get these uh, almost like le leopard spots more contrast of it and uh, yeah it's a it's a really nice skin yeah well, for those one who doesn't know this is a gray seal yeah it's a gray seal yeah and this is the most most common in the baltic i think yes uh, in the baltic uh, on the west coast of sweden you have the the other types of seal you don't have the gray seal there uh, I think uh, I think his name is Harbor Seal or something like that. Yeah, in I, think, I don't know that English name, but uh, 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 in Swedish it's Knubsal. Uh, 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 how big can they, they be grow when they are uh, full full grown? Uh, the the biggest ones, the biggest males in uh, in full winter fat, uh, can uh. weight up to almost three hundred kilos. Oh. That's a, a big boy. Yeah, it's a really big one. Yeah, yeah. And uh, just to mention something about this hunt, we went out. We are on our way up to Jokmok in northern Sweden. We have almost 1,000 kilometers left on our trip. And yeah. we just stayed here for like one evening hunt. And we was just we, we found a little rock in the sea where the, we saw some seals and you let us off. And when you went away with the boat, we got an opportunity. There was little suspicious. I had to take the shot when the seal was like five meters out in the water and it floated for like five eight minutes but took some time before uh, we uh, could organize us and then the, it have sunk yeah and it go in dark and we could see it i think once but the blood and so on so we went out this morning and yeah it was uh, it was too dark it was a really foggy evening uh, and uh, with the dark it was almost impossible to see it in the water because when they lay in the water 
the blood will pour out from them and uh, create a cloud of blood right uh, above them. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's almost impossible to see them. But uh, as as you told them, uh, we we went out this morning to just try to find it and it took us five minutes and then we saw it in the bottom. It's, yeah, I don't it's think it was much. Yeah, two 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 yeah. and a half meters maximum. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, yeah, I want to thank thank you for this hunt in the, those much. times. You're welcome. Uh, and uh, now I'm looking forward to uh, getting this uh, skin uh, done. And I have a great memory of an, uh, 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 of a hunt that I'm not used to. Yeah, yeah, it's glad. Yeah. Nice to have you here. Yeah, thank you. Me and Oliver have had a very pleasant seal hunt at Kalle and I cannot emphasize enough how different this kind of hunting is compared to anything else I've been doing. It's because uh, the hunt is done at sea on a totally different game. So for you guys who are interested in trying this out, I can strongly recommend you contacting Kalle and he can arrange the hunt for you and if you so wish full bar accommodation, pick up an airport and so on. A skin from a seal is much more complex to prepare than a skin from, let's say, a deer. Of course, Kalle can help you uh, arrange the skin preparation after a successful hunt. And for you guys who want to learn more about seal hunting, we made an interview with Kalle when we visited him in Hudiksvall. We talked to him about everything we wanted to know about seal hunting, how to prepare for seal hunt, why we hunt seal, what we do with the seal after the hunt, and so on. So uh, for you guys who are uh, interested in the hunt or preparing for a hunt, I think you will find out a lot of interesting stuff from that interview. You'll find a link to the interview in the description of this video.